The Pokemon games are well known for having the nasty habit of introducing something cool in one game only for it to vanish in the next. This happens over and over and over again like clockwork. The excuse Game Freak gives for this is because, quote, I think if by bringing removed features back, it would be a surprise in itself. Yeah, you know that thing you like? Well, you can't have it anymore, but don't worry, we'll surprise you with its return in future titles. Preferably behind additional paywalls to help incentivize further spending. So, instead of coming up with entirely new things, Game Freak can just reach into their bag of old, removed features to use instead. Not only is that way easier than relying on creativity and innovation, but you're also celebrated for bringing back a beloved old feature that should have never been removed in the first place. This is especially frustrating when it's extremely useful quality of life features that are removed, like the verse recorder, something that should have been a permanent staple of every Pokemon game seeing as how Pokemon battles, one of the pillars of the franchise, aren't going anywhere. I'm sad to say that Game Freak will be continuing this trend in Scarlet and Violet by removing physical contact during battles. Pokemon Legends Arceus was the very first Game Freak Pokemon game that had Pokemon consistently make contact with one another in battle, finally approaching the standard established by Pokemon Battle Revolution on the Nintendo Wii in 2008. This serves to elevate battles to new heights by making them more visceral and energetic, which in turn has them be far more engaging and immersive. This awesome addition will not be making a return in Scarlet and Violet, as Pokemon have regressed back to attacking the air in front of them instead of each other. A disappointing reality to say the least. Who knows what else could be removed in order to surprise players sometime down the line. The tragic regression of battles is not all that Game Freak showed off in their latest new trailer for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We finally got to see the Gen 9 starters rendered in the actual game, and they look pretty damn good. Some high quality models for sure. Interestingly enough, Fue Coco was showcased alongside an apple. In my last video, I mentioned how people were speculating that Fue Coco may be loosely based on an apple, and then in its literal introduction in the game, it's featured alongside an apple. Of all things. Coincidence? Perhaps. Maybe the Firecroft just really likes fruits. Speaking of fruits, this isn't the only time they're present in the trailer. A pair of crests were shown off, their significance is currently unknown, but they do contain some fruits. What appears to be an apple for the Scarlet Crest, and some grapes for the Violet Crest. Not sure if these fruits carry some type of specific meaning in Spain, but if any of you watching have some idea, feel free to share in the comments down below. Aside from the new starters, there were a handful of Gen 9 Pokemon revealed for the first time. First up was the new Pikachu clone, Tommy, who is beyond adorable. Only those without a soul can't like this thing. Lechunk, the hog Pokemon, is similarly adorable. Just look how it waddles out of the grass. Yet another adorable Pokemon, Small Liv, very meta, didn't think it was possible to make Boodoo even more cute. Small Liv is grass normal, which is pretty cool. Something we haven't seen since black and white with the Deerling line. We were also introduced to the legendary duo Horaidon and Miraidon. Design wise I think they look awesome. They appear to be able to transform or be used as methods of transportation with the tire-like protrusion on Horaidon's chest and the jet engines of Miraidon. Their typing has yet to be revealed, but we can attempt to infer from their appearance. Miraidon is very clearly an electric type. If it were to have a secondary typing, I would assume either dragon or steel. Horaidon is a bit trickier. Red in the Pokemon universe typically means fire type, but not always. Maybe fighting? Flying would be kind of sweet with the feather thing it has going on. I could see a ground typing as well. A secondary typing would be a combination of the above or with the safe dragon typing. Near the end of the trailer, as the box legends are being engraved onto the box art, there's a special effect that follows which may reflect their typing. Miraidon is enveloped in electricity while Koraidon in what looks like fire. Some food for thought. What do you guys think? These legendaries shed a light on the theme of this generation, which will focus on the past and the future, giving rise to some possible time travel shenanigans. This could explain how the ancient Hisu and Zoroark can be seen in Scarlet and Violet in some of the early pre-release screenshots. Instead of wormholes to different universes, we could be getting wormholes into different pockets of time, which can make for an extremely tantalizing experience if done correctly. The professors of Gen 9 also reflect the past-future dichotomy, and it's the first First time in the franchise's history that the professor changes depending on the game that you play. Scarlet represents the past with Koraidon and primitive waifu Professor Sada, and Violet represents the future with Miraidon and tech-savvy Chad Professor Turo. I wonder if 
Dialga, the temporal Pokémon, will make an appearance considering it's the master of time itself, to complement the time-focused theme of this generation. I believe we got a hint at the third legendary at the end of the trailer that I suspect will be based on the present. It's possibly teased by this crystalline background that reminds me of Zircon. The official Pokémon website briefly teases a similar aesthetic while loading. Said official Pokemon website confirms some speculation I briefly explored in my last video regarding the narrative slash story approach of the game. According to the website, quote, you're free to explore at your leisure and not in an order dictated by the story. Meet a variety of people and Pokemon and adventure in the world of Pokemon the way you want to. This suggests that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet will be very similar to Breath of the Wild, an open world game with an open-ended story where the player can craft their own unique story as they progress through the game. I really want to see how Game Freak will go about implementing this, but from the sounds of things it's so far so good and pretty exciting when you think about it, as nothing quite like this has ever been attempted in any Pokemon game. This excitement is further elevated by the fact that you can adventure with your friends in the same game world. We had a small taste of this in Sword and Shield with the wild area, but the way that was implemented was, quite frankly, atrocious. It was a laggy, buggy mess and the player characters in the overworld felt more like NPCs instead of real players. This was also only limited to a single area, whereas for Scarlet and Violet it sounds like it will expand to include a majority of the region, if not all of it, which is a massive improvement. Aside from the typical trading slash battling with each other, it's not clear what else can be accomplished by adventuring with your friends. Seeing them run around in the same game world will be cool at first, but will quickly lose its novelty if all you can do is trade, battle, and run alongside one another. Maybe you can battle other NPC trainers together in adult battles, or tackle wild Pokemon together in swarms. Hopefully Game Freak is able to come up with compelling and creative reasons to play Scarlet and Violet together with friends outside of traditional trading and battling. Follow Pokemon make a return which is great to see, although it seems to be as horribly implemented as it was in Sword and Shield judging by this shot of the trainers far outpacing their partner Pokemon. This will most likely result in the slower Pokemon endlessly teleporting towards the trainer which is a distracting eyesore that shatters immersion. Player customization is returning as well, although it may be more limited Limited since Game Freak only showed off two different outfits with some color swaps. A far cry from the customization revealed in both Sword and Shield and Legends Arceus that demonstrated way more diversity. I still get a bit of an uncanny feel from the player characters but must admit the player customization helps a bit. And the rest of the human characters look pretty good, like the unusually attractive professors we talked about earlier. Aside from the professors, the rival also made an appearance. She reminds me a lot of Momo from My Hero Academia and seems to be far less insufferable than both Hop and and how, so that's at least something. A neat little detail behind the rival in this shot shows a quillfish in an advertisement for a tire. This was preceded by an ad for a pair of shoes I assume the player can purchase, so the tire may be the same as well. What's fascinating about this random tire ad is that it doesn't really look like a bike tire, meaning the player may drive around the open world of Scarlet and Violet in some kind of larger, motorized vehicle. If it is somehow a bike tire then this may suggest the player's ability to customize the bike far more in depth than anything possible in previous titles. Riding Pokemon, preferably your own, is always the ideal method of travel just due to how thrilling of an experience it is, as well as its ability to immerse you into the world of Pokemon. But crafting a crazy motorized vehicle, or even an extra fancy bike, would be a level of innovation I would have never considered, but would be appreciated nonetheless. We get a quick glimpse of the battle UI for the games, substantial improvement from the ugliness of Sword and Shield, but that just may be my darker theme bias speaking. If you blinked, you might have missed it, but there's a bunch of Flabebe hiding in the grass. What makes this an exciting development is that it looks like the Pokemon are actually properly scaled this time around. Huge if true, as the wonky 3DS era scaling was a crushing blight that really detracted from the majesty of the Pokemon, as well as from the overall experience as a whole. The latter part of the trailer shows off a stadium, which may be one of the gyms in the game, as well as a large tower. A battle tower, perhaps. These two things were shown alongside a flag, hinting towards some kind of special relationship between the three. Scarlet and Violet are certainly shaping up to be decent looking titles. The regression of the battle mechanics is very disappointing, but the advent of True Scale is at least something to look forward to and is greatly appreciated. What were your thoughts on the trailer, and which version are you planning on getting, if any? Feel free to leave your thoughts down below as I read every comment and always look forward to hearing from you guys. Anyways, that's all for me for now, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.